بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي الله بتي في الله continue on with our treaties our study of uh, Imam Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi Allah يرحمه his treaties entitled هذه دعوتنا وعقيدتنا the Shaykh said, Hafidh al-Rahmatullahi uh, alayhi wa rahmatin wasiyah, he said, Nankiru ala men kabir wa za'ama ana al-du'ata ilallahi wahhabiyya umala wa na'lam qasdihim al-khabith anhum yuriduna in yaj'alu bayna al-ammati wa bayna ahl al-ilmi hajizan. This is incredibly important, this, this point that Imam Mukbil, Rahmatullah, he said. He said, and we reject uh, from those people who are arrogant and claim that the callers to Allah are Wahhabis and that they are Umala, meaning that they are uh, employed or workers of the government and we understand and know their intention their wicked intention that they want to make between the general people and the people of knowledge cause a division a divider between them subhanallah what is highly uh, relevant to our time because this again this is Imam Mukbil he died Allah Yarhamahu approximately about now I would say I think it was in 1999 and now we are in 2015 almost so over 15 years ago Allah Yarhamahu subhanallah and this treatise probably is even uh, prior to that so this treatise has at least 15 to 16 years ago referring to the fitna that Ahlul Sunnah was receiving from Ahlul Bid'ah and the Hizbiyin. And now don't we have people who consider themselves who are who are callers, supposedly callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who say, who write and, and refute Salafis now and who say that we want to put a barrier between the scholars, for example, in Saudi Arabia and the society in America. Don't we have people now who claim these very same claims or claims very similar to this? So it shows you that this Dawa Khabitha, this wicked Dawa Shaitaniya, this uh, satanic Dawa that is devised as a plot to separate the general people from the ulama, especially those ulama, that those rasikhun of al-ilm, because what these people, part of the, we are not always sure if it's a conscious plot, or it is just there, they've deceived themselves. Fi qulubihim marad, in their hearts is a sickness, that some of these individuals, they want to, and subhanAllah, they want to make it as if they are the people to go back to and refer back to. Yes, we need du'at in all of these societies, in the West, in the East, wherever, especially when you don't have ulama. But do not you set yourselves up as ulama at the expense of ahl al-ilm, the true ulama, those people who, who, are, who are well grounded in knowledge, who you took your knowledge from. Don't try to replace them because you're not on that level. And this is imperative that we understand this, Ahabatifillah, that this da'wah is da'wah khabitha. That some of these people just want you to, it is a form of his being because they only are seeking to glorify themselves. Please refer to me for your affairs. Please refer to him, my friend. Please refer to so-and-so who's just a da'i, who's maybe a da'i of Ikhwan al-Muslimin or some other Minhaj Khabitha, which goes against Kitabillah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So you'll find that these people they call to themselves and they want to set a barrier between 
the general people, the Muslims, the general Muslims, and the people of knowledge, the ulama, especially those rasikhun of al-ilm. And this is a da'wah khabitha. And likewise, or along with this ahabatifillah, as the Sheikh said, Allah yar'amu, he said, and also, anna du'a illallahi wahhabiyya. That these people will claim that these people are wahhabiyya. Isn't this what we see so many from Ahlul Bid'ah claiming about Ahlul Sunnah? They're Wahhabi. I've had so many people claim and call me Wahhabi. And call our brothers and sisters and our ulama, our scholars, as Wahhabi, agents of the Wahhabiyya. Uh, all kind of names that are unbefitting. Because who is a Wahhabiyya? Who is a Wahhabi? What they mean by this is to belittle those people calling to Allah, calling to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and calling to the Madhab of the Salaf, and adhering to those principles and those Kawa'id, and striving their best to do so. This is what they mean by this. Taqsid, uh, istihana, or to belittle Ahl Sunnah. And as much as they try to do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to assist Ahlul Sunnah in one form or another. Yes, we have hardships. Yes, Salafis receive hardships. Yes, we have some people who are extreme, who claim to be Salafis and distort the image of Salafiyyah. Yes, we are people who are very weak in the principles of, 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 of Ahlul Sunnah and the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah who claim to be Salafi and distort the image of Salafiyya. Yes, we have all of that that we have to deal with. But as I've said countless times, countless times, which is a qa'idah from the ulama, al-ibra bi haqa'iq, laysa bi musammiyat, that the proof of something is in its substance, not in its name. So we don't get hung up on yelling from the rooftops that we're Salafi or this and that and the other. Although we are proud to claim that we are Salafi and that we're trying to follow the Madhab of the Salaf. We're proud of that. We're not ashamed of that. But however, we realize that that isn't sufficient, that claim. That claim in and of itself is not sufficient. Nor is that claim in and of itself necessary. Nor is it an obligation for you to say you're Salafi. And I know those who will argue and debate this issue. But if you say, if you're of those who claim that it is wajib to say that you're Salafi, I am Salafi, to say it like that, then that means what you mean by that. If you say it's wajib, then now you've come to the ahkam al khamsa when it comes to the to issues of fiqh. And that means what you're saying is that when you, if you do not say that, then you are now, uh, that it's sinful. That it's sinful to not say that. So that's why we don't say, as many of our ulama say, that it's not wajib necessarily to say that you're Salafi. You should. They recommend that. But to say that it's wajib, then that means now you have uh, made something wajib that it is sinful to leave it. That's what we mean by wajib. So we have to be careful with our, our claims and make sure that we adhere to Kitab wa Sunnah. Along with this ahabatifillah is we could continue to explore this issue of Wahhabi and it is an issue that won't end. But these people, they try to use that term in a derogatory, it's a derogatory term. But you should never make something derogatory if it comes from one of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Al-Wahhab. رَبَّنَا لَا تَزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ ذَدَيْتِنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكُ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّاب This is a dua in the Qur'an. This is a dua that we say that is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and affirms for us that Allah is al-wahhaab. He is the giver. He subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the supplier of our risk and our creator. And those are one of his divine names and attributes. So how is it you can make something derogatory from it? Look at how Ahl Bid'ah 
how their zaid in their hearts has covered their aql in their intellect, that they even distort one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and make it madhmoon, endahu. So this is an evil, wicked distortion. And they mean by it to belittle the du'at, as the Shaykh said, Rahmatullah, Rahmatin, Wasi Ali. And with regards to this Ahabatifillah, uh, what is mentioned in the explanation of this treatise is that the enemies of Islam from uh, prior times or in the past up until now have used these kind of names first and foremost the enemies of Islam, of Islam use these names to distort the da'wah of the Anbiya and the Rusul to claim by giving them uh, names and speaking about them in wicked uh, wicked uh, ways and for example the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they called him Sahir you know that he was a a, a, a practicer of, of, of magic a magician they called him Majnoon they said that he was crazy they said that he was kidab, that he was a liar. All of these are claims that they claimed about the Anbiya of Allah, Azza wa Jal. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. But however, those wicked names did not deter them from their da'wah. And likewise, if the Anbiya themselves were attacked and their honor was attacked and they were attacked by the people who, and they own, for only calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course people were calling to the to kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf will be attacked because that is part of the minhaj of the anbiya that is part of the warath al anbiya you you that those people are our scholars they inherit knowledge that's what they inherit from the ulama from from the anbiya al ulama warath al anbiya that they're the inheritors of the prophets. Why? They inherit their hardships as well in da'wah. They inherit their the, the knowledge from them in order to, to and, and that path is so steep that when they're calling to that path, they will receive harm. And they will have people speaking ill of them. And some of the names that some of the people like from amongst the Hizbiyin, you have a sheikh, his name is Abdurrahman Abdul Khalik in Kuwait. And some of the things that he has written in his very treaties or in his tapes, you'll find him saying, Ulama Haid wa Nifas, that they're the scholars of menstrual blood and pre postpartum uh, bleeding. Meaning that the scholars, they speak about these issues when they don't know the fiqh waqia, they don't know what's relevant in the societies, what's going on in the news and in the world. And this is a khata. This is a, 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 a very severe mistake. And this is the same da'wah that we have from those people, and I'm going to name them, like Yasser Qadi and others who are amongst the English-speaking community, spreading the same thing, saying the scholars are out of touch, and giving examples in their lectures to belittle the scholars. Those lectures, those, those uh, speeches when you're speaking about the scholars like that, are not encouraging the youth to take from the scholars to learn Arabic and go seek, seek knowledge in the Muslim lands, but instead, those lectures are belittling the scholars, encouraging the youth to come back to them, to come back to taking their knowledge from Nu'man Ali Khan, to take their knowledge from Yasir Qadi, to take their knowledge from Suhaib Well, Webb, to, uh, from uh, Hamza Yusuf uh, and these the Sufis and other people. This is what they're encouraging. Instead of encouraging, encouraging people to go back to those people who are domestic, be sunnah. And those people, like the ulama, the scholars of Islam, those people who've helped and Allah used them as tools to preserve this religion because they adhered to the madhab of the salaf throughout times. And they will continue until 
had to tukum the sa'a until the sa'a is established, until the hour is established. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tazal ta'ifatu min ummati dhahirin ala haq had to yet tihum emir Allah wa hum ala thalik. That the, the talking about ahla sunnah, ahla hadith, ahla ilm, ahla jihad, ahla sunnah, that they will continue to be a group from my nation on, uh, on the haq, on the truth, until they meet Allah, until the, until the day of judgment. They'll always be there. But these people who distort the names and try to belittle Salafiyah, the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, try to belittle it by giving it names. Salafis are this, Wahhabi this, uh, Salafi Jihadi, calling people Salafi Jihadi. We don't know what a Salafi Jihadi is. This is also another false claim and Al-Qab that's given from the people. But we say a if someone is from, from the Salafis, that they're from Ahl Sunnah, Tiwal Jama'ah, they're from Ahl Sunnah. We, they say they're Salafi. Best. We claim that we say they're Salafi. But we don't have to add a, these al qab Salafi Jihad, is Salafi Takfiri. Because Takfir, Salafis are far from it. In, without its conditions, and without its prohibitions, and without those uh, 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 those kawaid and principles that are established by the ulama that are based on kitab ila wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. And likewise, jihad, jihad fi sabilillah. We don't say that ISIS is uh, 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 salafi jihadis. No, we say that they are jihadi takfiris. We don't say that, we don't claim anything to do with salafiyah. We don't say they're from ahl sunnah wa jama'ah. No matter what they say, no matter what Others who cry and claim that these people are from the Sunnah because their brutality, their minhaj, their methodology takes them out of the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we say we have no part of from them. Matter of fact, those people would gladly take shed our blood because they consider us enemies. And we consider them enemies of the Dawah, the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah. min those are just some of the things. And as Imam Muqbil said, and he said, he mentioned some of those things that in his time, Ahl Bida was claiming about the scholars saying, La yarafun al -waqa. As we heard this Dawah in the 90s, the late 90s, mid 90s, that they would say about the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, they don't understand the current events and current affairs, and they need to study, and you need to cur study current event and current affairs. No, you should have some knowledge of those things. And don't think that your ulama, ulama of Ahl Sunnah, don't know about those things. But they know about those things, what is sufficient. Not in going into depth and following every news article, every news channel, and what did Jazeera say, what did Al Arabiya say, what did CNN say, what did this one say. No, they don't go and spend all of their time because they spend their time spreading the good. Spreading what we need to practice our religion. And understanding those things. Uh, those current affairs and current issues in the context of the religion and making fatwa relevant to those things. And in this regard, so regardless of what the Muqtadi'een say, those, those people of Ahl Bida and Ahl Zandaka and the heretics and others, regardless of what they're saying, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِيُوا نُورُ اللَّهِ بِيَفْوَاهِمْ they want to put out the light of Allah with their mouths. But Allah will complete His light even if the disbelievers hate it. And even if Ahl Bida hates it, they hate to see Ahl Sunnah spreading khair, spreading good, calling the people to Tawheed, calling the people to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf. They hate that. So Wulo Kariyal Ahla Bidah, even if Ahla Bidah hates it, Ahla Sunnah is going to continue. Allah is all tied to me in Umati Dari Al Haq, had to let him remember Allah, whom Allah Dalek, Kama Kala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wala Alaihi Wasallam, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan, Wasallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Nabi and Muhammad, Wala Alaihi Wasahbi Wasallam.